This clip is about backing up and restoring the open source point of sale program using uh, PHP MyAdmin. This is the OzPos login screen, but we don't need to use that. We can go straight over to PHP MyAdmin, login, On the left we can see OzPos, which is the name of our database. If we click on that to select it, we can then go here to export. And we can see that by default all of these tables have been highlighted. And further down here the SQL file type has been selected. We don't need to change anything on there, we can simply scroll down Let's check to save as file. We click on go and it's going to save it as ospos.sql. Click on OK. It says the download's complete. That's just a, a message for us. If I just move that to one side for a moment, we can check and see that it's here. It should be in the downloads folder, which it is. What I'm going to do is copy that onto the desktop right there and we can have a quick look inside to see what it's like. And there we have a text file with all of the information in it, all of the details of the database. If we open this up to full size, we've still got this database selected and I'm going to drop it there's a warning there that it will destroy the complete database. I'm going to OK that. <coughs> now we don't have one called OzPos anymore. If I move this out of the way again, open another browser. If I click on my shortcut to OzPos, nothing happens because we've just destroyed the database. There's nothing for it to talk to. But we know that we've got a copy of it on the desktop here. So if I blow this up to full size again, I can now create a database with the same name as before. Click on create. So it's created a database but there are no tables in it because we haven't put any in yet. What I can do now is go to import but instead of going to the OSPOS folder and looking for a file which we did when we first installed the program, I can click on Browse here, go to Desktop, and I can look for the OSPOS SQL file which is down there at the bottom. That was saved at 9.30 and it's 9.32 now. If I click on Open, then down on the right I click on Go, it says that it's executed 68 queries. So that should be back on track now. Let me exit from PHP my admin. Let's just neutralize that, go to a blank screen. I'm going to click on the OSPOS shortcut and it's back there again. And if I want to test it, I've got my items, customers, reports, they're all there because it's been restored. So that's a very simple way to back up and restore a database. This is very simple on a local server. So this particular program is installed on a local server, so I've got direct access to it. If you're doing it online, you may have to go through a control panel at the web host and that takes a bit longer. So what you need to do there is to de um, delete the complete database through the control panel and then create another one with the same name, users and so forth and then reinstall from there or restore the database from there by importing it. One of the ways we can make that easier let me just go back to PHP MyAdmin again is to have a second instance. So here we've got OSPOS which we just dealt with. We deleted it and then created it again and imported the data. 
and there's one here called OSPOS2. Now you can call them whatever you like, but this is a simple way of doing it. So if I imported the same stuff from where it was before on the desktop, and click on Go, I'll have two databases with exactly the same information in and obviously I can delete one of those, I can uh, drop the whole database and then I can import the data from the backup through the control panel without interfering with the other one. So all that the user has to do is to have two shortcuts on their desktop, one to OSPOS and one to OSPOS2 or OSPOS A, OSPOS B, whatever you want to call them. Let's just have a look at that. If I go to home, they're usually using OSPOS, which is A or 1, whatever you want to call it. Someone takes that offline while they're making a backup and restoring a backup, but the store has to keep op operating. So all they do is switch to another instance of it, which is called OSPOS2 perhaps, and uh, they carry on using that one while the other one is being restored. So you can move from one to the other without losing any data. It may sound a little confusing, but if you work through it a step at a time, it's, it's really quite simple. That's probably enough on this for now. I'll do some more clips on other topics later on. Thanks for listening. Bye for now.